All right, so what I'm gonna do in this video is work an assignment that I gave my brand new shiny blended statistics course um, on how to use the basics of JASP. Um, so this is just very simple overview on um, opening and closing and doing a couple little things in JASP. So the first thing we wanna do is import the data file that's been provided with the assignment. So you can find this assignment uh, on Blackboard or coming soon to stattools.com. Right. So I'm going to go to file here. And then what I do is go to computer and browse to find the folder that I hit that in. Thankfully I have it pulled up right here and so it's intro software data. So I've opened the data set included with the assignment. So first thing it tells me is that my first variable, I can clearly see it's a number, but it's imported as nominal here. These two clearly imported as text because it has a little A right here. Um, I know it's real tiny, it's hard to see, but it's about right there. Uh, and I clearly also have a missing data point right here. So the little dot means that it was missing. So I'm gonna change variable one into numeric column. It's easy enough, I click right here. And I'm gonna change that to this little ruler for numeric. You could also use this sort of ordinal interval one, but we're gonna go with numeric here, or ratio um, to be more technical. And that doesn't look like it's done much, um, but it does um, change what's gonna happen here in a minute. I'm gonna try changing these other two columns, or one of them, to numeric. So here's stuff too click here I'll try to change it to numeric and it basically tells me no so it will not allow me to change text to a numeric column because it's text so it doesn't it won't like assign numbers to these things for you so it won't it just doesn't do anything is the answer and so what happens nothing <laughs> um, let's create descriptive statistics for these three variables I don't forget I can move this sort of this stuff around so I can give myself more room over here if I wanted to. Um, but let's click descriptives, descriptive stats. I'll plug in all three of them over here. And let's see what it asks us to do. So that's the create the descriptives. We're gonna click on display frequency tables. So this gives us the averages of our variables. And you'll notice that stuff two and stuff three here didn't get any averages. Okay, not all values are allowed for nominal text variables, so that's why we didn't get that. We're gonna hit display frequency tables. Now, because variable one is listed as a number, it does not show up down here. And so that's what this little note says here. If variable one shows up, you did not do number two correctly, and you should go back and change it to numeric. If I were to change that variable to back to ordinal here, I could go back to descriptives and now it would show up. So it's very dynamic. I can go back and forth except when they are importing as text. Okay. But for the purposes of this assignment, leave it as a number and that's going to auto go back away. So it did that for me automatically, which is really nice. Now for my frequencies down here, it gave me the frequency of each of these text options, which is really handy if you're working with grouped variables or any kind of label that you're interested in how many people are in each label because the average does not make sense when we're talking about labels. So how many distinct data points do I have? Well, I can see visually it's just one here, but let's say you had 900 columns. What you do here is look at the missing column. So it says missing one. What happens to the descriptives box for stuff two and thing three? Well, we kind of just talked about this, but here it says that it won't run means on them because they're not appropriate, which is good because it won't let you calculate the average cheese column or the average true false column when it really shouldn't be treated that way. So under statistics, we're gonna add skew and kurtosis, and then under plots, we're gonna add distribution plots. So click statistics, let's add skew and kurtosis. So those add, um, added up here. And we'll talk uh, in an assignment soon on what those are. Under plots, we're gonna add distribution plots. Okay. So a histogram here, because this is uh, continuous-ish data for the first variable. So it looks like we have the most fours. And then 
still sort of histograms, but really more like frequency, like a, just a, a count kind of chart because histograms traditionally across the bottom are continuous, but here we've got just counts of each category. So this is in alphabetical order, but it doesn't need to be for any particular reason. Now we're going to export our results to an HTML file. So I'm going to go File, Export Results. Now I can say my computer, I can just stick it on my desktop here somewhere. So if I were to open that file, it's going to open for me in Firefox. Um, but it exports in this nice pretty version, so it gives us that you created all of this stuff. Okay. Um, which allows us to see that you've done the assignment correctly. All right. Um, and it's created it several times because I've gone through and cl clicked, I think, OK a couple of times. Um, you can remove analyses that are incorrect. So let's say, like, oops, I just want the last one because that's the one she really wants from us. Um, I can click the down arrow here and click remove. It ran a couple of times for me because I, I clicked OK a couple of times. And that's fine if you have it multiple times. The point is to get it, not necessarily to have it just once. Uh, ex include that descriptives table in your Word document, showing that you know how to cut and paste it into Word as well as export it. So we're going to click down, click copy. I'm just going to paste it here, hit Control V or Command V on a Mac, and then upload both of those documents online to Blackboard as your assignment, please. Um, so turn in both this Word document that includes the fact that you answered these questions, so type in your answers here and include that HTML file so we can give you credit for completing this assignment.